Thank you so much for coming. Uh, can everybody come in really close? Kind of, it's nice to get everybody close. There's a lot of different cross voices and noises happening all at once. So we're Joss and Tree, and I started photographing weddings in 2004. And I photographed weddings for five years, and then I met my, lo my lovely wife, Tree, in 2009, where she joined me, and we started working together. And it's been quite a journey. Uh, as many of you know, uh, how it is to work uh, as a team, uh, husband and wife team, our partner team, uh, can be very interesting. Uh, a lot of great <laughs> things can happen out of that, and a lot of tension can come out of that. So today, we want to talk about what it means to work as a team using the MagMod tools. And so we have some pretty, in pretty interesting uh, tips and tricks that we want to share with you. Do you want to say something, Treat? We're going to do the pass off. Check. What I wanted to say is, even though we're a husband and wife team, what we're going to be teaching is for you to use with anybody, an assistant, your photographer friend, whoever. So we've created a sign language so that we don't have to yell back and forth at each other. So I got a Wait. question. Okay. I turned off. Okay, I've got a question. <laughs> How many of you are single shooters without a lighting assistant? Okay. How many of you always bring a lighting assistant with you to a shoot? Okay. On a scale of one to 10, how much stress are you feeling on a wedding day when you're using off-camera flash? From, from one to 10, how many like, are, are kind of like in the one to three zone? No big deal, I'm pretty chill, got it down. How many people are at a four to four to six? How many people are just off the chart? They're like eight to 12, you're just totally stressed out, it's freaking me out, I don't know how to manage this, right, okay? So weddings are stressful, and we've identified two things from that stress. First thing is, what we're after in our brand is real moments that are well lit or creatively captured. And so subjects are moving very quickly and that right there alone is a massive cause of stress. Trying to capture that, hands down. The second thing is awkward communication between you, whoever's the shooter or the photographer and whoever's the assistant. That awkward communication could be extraordinarily stressful and a game changer if you figure out how to do it right. <laughs> so get this. Wait, you're not on. Get this, okay. Can everyone hear me? Okay, so. In every conversation, there are six conversations. And I'm talking about the, the awkward communication here. There's you, number one. Then there's me. Then there's my perception of you. Then there's your perception of me. And then there's my perception of you, and then there's your perception of me. And things can get seriously messed up in that process, especially on a wedding day, right? So how do you manage that? Because we get into this thing called the spiral of reciprocating perspectives that can really mess you up if you don't know how to deal with it. So today, we want to talk about check our solution. <laughs> because, yeah. Go ahead. OK. <laughs> our solution. Oh. I'm turning it off. Our sol check. Our solution was creating a sign language between us so that we could almost go a whole wedding day without talking to each other. And you can do that also with your assistant. But what it also means is that you're not creating awkward moments in front of your clients. So by doing that, we are reducing stress, we're removing awkward communication, and uh, it makes it easier to light real moments. Okay, so now, here's one part of our sign language. Go ahead, keep talking. This is one part of our sign language. Signs for MagMod tools, okay? Grid, fixed, on a, on a flash, right? We're Wait, communicating sorry, I, yeah, go the mic. Go, go ahead. You just show, I'll say okay. it, okay? Grid and fist. And Again, we created this because someone's across the room. Maybe you're in a hotel room with your bride getting ready and you want to introduce light. 
Your assistant already has that on a stand or on a monopod, and now you are communicating without words. Boob. <laughs> so we call the spear boob. boob. Sometimes you have to be careful when you talk about that in front of people. <laughs> if you don't know what the spear boob is, this is it. Okay. Sphere and a grid. So Boob and grid. Yeah. Double grid. Double grid. Flash. Double grid. Flash. <laughs> and this, the mag beam. Mag beam. Yeah. Mag beam, mm -hmm. which you all should be using because it's incredible. And the snoot. snoot. <laughs> it's like a stork. Gels, you just, you can't talk about that. That's impossible. You got to figure that out. And then the mag box. Okay. Yeah. So once you have your tools, then you can communicate with your assistant. And this is, we have multiple sign language because we also have uh, language from assistant back to photographer. And we also have posing language. Um, we're only going to go over this right now. So in this instance, when right away when we get something and we're happy, like right in the beginning, we're like, good light. That's like the beginning. Are we good? This is backlight. So we use a circle around. Um, and same thing. This was, would have been rim light, circle around. And what's beautiful here is that we're further back. But because we're doing these larger motions, you can actually see. Yeah, and so you know, all of you know how absolutely critical a fraction of a second can be when you capture a moment, right? And so it isn't necessarily difficult saying, okay, well, I, I used a backlight here with the, with the sphere. Okay, got it. But can you do that in the middle of the heat of the moment? That's the real question. Can you think about that idea and can, can, can you communicate that with your assistant fast and efficient without ca creating chaos and awkwardness between the two of you or for your client, most importantly, right? Yeah. Same here. Same thing here. We, we were, all of a sudden, we're, we have the sunset. The sun is going down. It's going fast. It's like, OK, how are we going to, OK, we're going to backlight it. Let's backlight. We're communicating with the backlight. And we're going to put a warm gel in the back to match the sunset to illuminate that warmth behind them. Go ahead. Obviously, this is a pretty intimate moment. We don't need to be talking. <laughs> There's like, this language allows us to allow our clients to be authentic and present and in their own zone. Yeah, so here's in the middle of a ceremony, right? So this is a real moment. And this ceremony is very, it's happening very fast. And notice how far we are away from our assistant. Our assistant is close to the, to the couple, right up front in the middle of the ceremony. And we're way back because we're trying to get that composition, getting a 16 millimeter lens to get the, the framing of that drape and shooting from a distance. And we're, and we're actually, we're using a, a sign language. We're going light it from the right at a 45 degree angle. So this is our communication from that distance 45 from that on the right hand side and when we get the shot from that distance we're saying got it yes i got it yes i got the shot and we can move on and then the assistant knows we can move on from that point yeah so we need to breeze through some of these okay yeah so here's like really fast crazy moments happening in the on the wedding day we're actually uh shooting it uh, we're doing left, so 45 degree angle from the left, right? So you got all these fire dancers and, and are in the middle of, a, of the heat of a, another ceremony happening. We're communicating like this from a distance, and it works very quick, and it's very, very precise. It's not this charade game that we're playing with our assistant kind of like halfway communicating through the, through the wedding, not knowing what's going on. Here's another example where we're actually saying, okay, we want to we wanna do a really high angle, a 25 degree angle, so it's not 45. It's a 25 degree angle with a mag box coming right down on the couple, so it's really nice light. Go ahead, Tree. Actually, in this instance, I didn't have anybody. I was all by myself in a mirrored room, and it was quite challenging. Um, but you, you could communicate this way in that situation. Um, 
I'm going to just talk about this. So Jaws is outside. It's really cold. The couple is inside. You can barely see them somewhere. Yes. And the, our assistant is inside. And now they look out the window. They see what we want to do. Image is created. The cool thing is we're going to the glass. And when you're going through glass, it can be really hard. You can't yell. So obviously, all of these are similar. Wait, wait, go back. Can we go I'm back? Okay. Okay, so this one right here, this was really tough because we're up to snow, we're at the snow shooting. Our fingers are totally freezing. We got a bag over a camera. You can barely see through the camera. We're shooting through icicles trying to focus in on the couple. And you're trying to communicate to your assistant who's on the inside through the glass. So there's many barriers of, of communication trying to make this thing happen and, allow, and make sure that the couple feels natural and romantic. And this is like a few moments before they're going into their ceremony. And the lights on the inside, but we're communicating through the through the through the through the glass with sign language. Yeah, Josh, we gotta move on. Yeah. And then is that in a mirror? No. 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 Just shooting. Shooting through the other guy's arms. Yeah. So. So again, am I on? Okay. So again, we're just always using this language. Wait a minute. This is ninety degree. Ninety degree. This so is 90 degrees. This is 90. This is 45. This is 90. A 90 degree angle. Wow. And this is 120. This is 120. So that, that skinny light coming in from the side. Um, so here's a new one. This one is new and it's this. And we use this lighting setup a lot on the dance yes. floor. So yeah. the light's coming this way and then coming this way, sandwiching the light. It's like this or like this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we use this a lot. So, okay, so this, this one right here, you can see Tree backlighting, <laughs> right? She's in the madness. And we have a, a mag bounce on the camera to give the fill light to the couple in the heat of this crazy champagne spraying moment late at night in the pool. So that was a sandwich of light coming in to really make sure that we can get all of the particles flying in the air and efficiently communicate that. Yeah. So, so, check. So on this one, check, are you off? Go ahead. Here check. Go. So on this one, it's relating front and back. Right. You know, it's not 45 side. Do you have a flash on your camera? Yeah. Yep. There's a flash on camera and we have the bounce. This is the mag bounce, and actually we have a sign for that, and it's this. Yeah, it's this. Yeah, it's actually this. Yep. But, okay, so Chi, let me talk about this one for a second. So this is an interesting situation where you're trying to light two scenarios at once. So our communication around this is to communicate to the assistant to say, story one, and you point to the story. Story two is over here. So if I was doing this one, I would say, Story one with a grid and a flash. Story two with a boob and a flash. Got it? So we can communicate those two stories, light up those two stories at the same time. In this case, we had the assistant run over, put a flash on a stand, because they're stationary, they're not moving, but the father might be moving around. So they, now the assistant is moving with the father in that organic way to get that moment of light. Yeah, so lighting both stories here, one of our lovely assistants is always looking at the shooter, the photographer. It's constant eye contact because they need to be watching because at any moment, we're going to throw another sign at them. <laughs> so that's the shot. That's the shot, yeah. Um, this is encouraging our couples to have a real moment together, even in the middle of the chaos. And our assistant is able to just communicate fully with us and not take them out of their space at all, even though this is what we were dealing with. It's loud. It's crazy. A blue gel coming in. Yeah. Way. Blue gel. Blue gel shining to the side to illuminate these. And then the mag box. 
We like blue gel, obviously. We like blue gel. You can go ahead. So this is a this is a shot where there's three lights. There's one light with blue gel. Oops, sorry. There's one light blue gel lighting up the icicle. There's another light backlighting them with a CTO gel. And then there's a third light coming in from the side over here, illuminating all of the spray from all of the snow. So our assistant is back there throwing all the snow, celebrating them as the light is, is illuminating all the particles in the air. But at the same time, we have that rim light happening, happening right behind them. I think we actually had one more light as a snoot that we had actually pointed right at the front of them as well. So that was a complicated one, but it was a, you know, the last night shot that we wanted to really get. Color, color temper orange. Color temper orange, yeah. Okay, so here's a kind of more of a complicated situation. This is a wedding at the Crystal Ballroom in Portland. It's one of the oldest ballrooms in Portland, and it has all these beautiful murals. And the couple wanted to make sure that the atmosphere and the art of that scene is brought into their photography. So we actually shot up into the painting with the reflection of the couple. So on the backhand side, we have the mag box illuminating the couple on the side behind us. So imagine that this is, this is the artwork. We're shooting up into the reflection of that. <laughs> and the only way for us to get, grab a, a, uh, a sharp focus is to put the flashlight from, the, from our iPhone to the same plane as their face. So you're zooming, you're, you're focusing and getting, it's dark, it's really hard. It's really and difficult to holding, focus. Holding and holding that flashlight right next to their face so you make sure that you grab that focus. And then they have to move the iPhone out of the way with the mag box and shoot that shot. So it can get really heated, and you don't want to take too much time away from your guests or from your couple because then they can, they can get a little, you know, they can lose it. They can kind of get out of the moment. We need to breeze. So we're... Oh. Go ahead. So we're going to go through these pretty quickly. Um, obviously, these are silhouette shots using gels, okay? Color gels here. This is its own color. We added blue. They're complementary colors, blue and orange are complementary colors on the color wheel. I study the color wheel. Uh, in this instance, it's a, a red orange gel on the sand. Also a silhouette. Silhouette. <laughs> we like silhouettes. This was a 24 person Indian wedding party and we had no idea what to do. We'd never photographed that big of a wedding party before. We went two days beforehand and started walking around and scoping what was close to their hotel. We found this. We decided that we could make something here work with all the guys up here silhouetted and then putting the women dispersed and then lighting them individually in groups with the mag box and then creating a composite. And that's what happened. And we got an Easter egg. And this is super Portland right here. Did they like it? Were they happy with that? They love it. This is different. So church turn yours off, yeah? Okay. Okay, so here we are. It's 2 a.m. in the middle of an Italian manor in the middle of Umbria, Italy. We're exhausted. We've been teaching, or we've been shooting for five days nonstop with this couple and, and their 50 friends following them all over the place. So we're exhausted. And we're like, okay, the groom absolutely wanted to get this cigar shot. And we had this really cool old red Italian wall to play with. So we used three lights to get this one. First one we used uh, was a speed light against the wall. Let's go back maybe just like, that's kind of. So we have a, a speed light red gel illuminating uh, kind of at a 45 degree angle up into the wall to give that really a nice zen red surrounding of them. And then we had a, another light that was coming from behind them at an angle like this, more like a, um, uh, a skinny light coming in from a, a, or two, a two, 120 degree angle illuminating with blue gel, illuminating the, the, the smoke. And then the third flash was a snoot to come right onto the, the groom's face. Now the trick of the snoot is to be able to go up and, and exactly look at how the snoot is going to hit that person's face and you can hit that test button and you can see exactly where that light is going to hit on their face. Because if you go back and you don't have an assistant, 
then that's going to mess you up and you're probably going to miss it and they're going to, you're going to lose the moment. Yeah. Snoot is a very, very precise slice of light and I love to use it because it's, it's different, it's interesting. So. So for us and, and our brand and our style and why our couples come to us is because we shoot creatively, obviously we use lots of tools and whatnot, but also they know that we are so much about their experience and their authentic moments. And so being able to control light whenever you want with speed lights, strobes, and, and, or, and or even natural light, um, for us, it elevates just a pretty photo and turns it into a super meaningful photo to them. And um, meaningful and powerful is what our brand means. Um, and again, we, we showed you another photo where this similar scene was there. It was actually with this door and there was a couple over here and we shot into this glass. Here's another version of that similar photo with a story. Stories there, lighting's correct. This is a mag box, by the way. Again, we are at real moment. Do you want to talk? Yeah. Yeah. This is a. This is what we can. This this is a shot where we feel like it's it's using the mag tools in a, fo a true photojournalistic moment. The the couple is having a very expressive, heightened moment. Uh, the, the speaker is backlit with a rim light. So we have a rim light to our assistant on story one. We have a right angle light, story two on the couple. And then we put some twinkle lights in front of the, of the lens shooting it at the same time, pressed against the wall and a, and a speaker against the wall trying to get the shot as it's happening. Twinkle so lights. for us, that felt like that was a good example of how we like taking it to the next level with the magma tools. Here's that's a sketch of, of what it was. Yeah. Turn off. Oh yeah. So this is that setup basically. Um, it's pretty complex. But once you get used to doing all of this, it's not that complex anymore. You get used to it. Backlight. Mag beam. Mag beam. So Some our assistant beam. has the beam on a monopod. And the beam is incredible. It is so powerful. It takes your speed light and like. Um, What's the difference between the beam and the, 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 the snoot? Yeah. Oh, the beam. The beam. Oh yeah. The, uh, I can do it. The beam. Oh. The beam will throw the light like two and a half times further and focus the light in a, in a very powerful way. It's so awesome because you don't. You're not interfering with the with the guests, and you can get this super focused, powerful light right there i mean it's so awesome um in this situation we're asking them uh, uh, it was really important to have a hand signal with our assistant to make sure we get in any flash flare so one of our signs is, is is bring the light down or bring it up in the middle of that moment so that you don't you know because sometimes you're like you're, you're in the middle of the moment it's happening super fast and that assistant can't figure out if, if, that's, if that flare of that flash is gonna hit the, the photographer or not. So bringing it down like that, communicating backlight, backlight, bring it down, bring it down, shoot, 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 and you just get it. It's amazing the way you can communicate very, very quickly and, and efficiently that way. Are you shooting through? So same here, these are twinkle. Yeah, they're the little, little LED on copper wire ones. Um, yeah, so here's that setup again. <laughs> and uh, this is a common one for us for first dances. It's, we always do something similar to this for a first dance. Twinkle lights again, and similar scenario. They're both wearing dark clothes, so you're not going to get as much bounce. But if you want to bounce, you, you put your hand on your chest. You're like, bounce. And you can even point to who you want to bounce on. Uh, most of the time, the bride's dress is white, and so it... it really acts like a reflector um, and real moment natural light and then we've lit her in the mirror this is another reflection shot it was at a hotel in Portland where it had a lot of uh, photography on the walls to and, uh, it just felt like wow this this bride here her face 
seems pretty similar to the, the glamour of this, this person's face. And so she doesn't know we're shooting this, but she's getting ready, and we're kind of like dialing in the shot through this reflection. So we had two flashes here. We had a backlight for the, the spray, and we had a snoot coming in on the right-hand side. Once we had grabbed that focus, we just shot, 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 and all of a sudden that, flash ha that, that spray happened, and we got the moment. She happened to be smiling at the same time. But it took that teamwork. You could not get that without that teamwork, that especially grabbing that focus. Here's another example in the middle of the ceremony, or another real moment. Um, we're at the back. We have our, our assistant on the right-hand side with a uh, mag beam shooting across the bridal party and the bride. And we actually had a reflection uh, that we're holding this reflection in our hand. We're reflecting the, 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 the stained glass window that was behind me that all of a sudden became on the reflection here. I could shoot right through it and then also get the nice light from the, from the mag beam. We're going to run out of time. Yeah. Go ahead. So, check. Go ahead. Check. Um, we're going to run out of time probably, so we're going to breeze through this one. But not a very attractive room. We're in Italy in a villa. Um, we see this and we decide how can we bring this in. She's by herself getting ready. There's no one else. It's an elopement. It's just Joss and I. So how can you create something beautiful in this space? And we're quiet. She's in a very zen space, so we are not talking. We are using all of our lighting language. We are climbing on the bed. I have to put her veil on because there's no one else there. And then we get this. So standing up. Sure. Joss is standing on the bed. I'm like here. So here, see the bed? Joss is standing on the bed. And you're using, you're using he's using a piece of glass because you're not shooting into that actually. You use a piece of glass that he's holding. And then I'm lighting her. Yeah, her reflection on the painting, really on glass. Just in the moment, just going. Go I'm not sure why it's blank. Oh, good. Okay, so let me, let me talk here. We're almost done. We've got to finish. No, yeah. I want to get to the end. Okay, do you want to turn off your mic? Oh, yeah, sorry. Okay, so we're going from shooting basic shots to shots where we have control over. Maybe it's an engagement session. Or maybe we actually have creative portraits on a wedding day. Then we're taking the MagMod tools to the photojournalistic realm. So oftentimes we're trying to think in our head, well, how can we prepare ourselves to do that in the heat of the moment on a wedding day and come up with these ideas? So you got to go from practicing on your own to practicing during engagement sessions where you have more time and control, practicing creative portraits in the moment, which you have a little bit more time. But then mastery comes from executing in the moment, right? So Here's an example of us at home. We're practicing with the mag mask, and we're trying to create a pattern against the wall and understand how that pattern works. Then we're starting to play with a, third, a second flash and putting that flash against the wall and getting that, that silhouette. So now we've got, OK, we're putting the mag mask, and we're putting a, a, a kind of a, a grenade light against the couple for that silhouette. Then we're starting to play with a third flash in front of the lens. And we're thinking, OK, how do we do this without it making it look like a bomb going off in front of the, of, the, of the flash? So we had a grid on the left with a flash about two inches from the lens. We spray the lens with water to create this flare. And then we have the mag, mag mask with the, with the blue. We have the the red gel behind the couple, and we have the flare coming in from the side. So it's three flashes at once. Shot at F-16 at 100 ISO. And we're over our time. <laughs> Thanks for coming. We have a workshop coming up. We're going to be announcing three new workshops. Thank you.